liver diet was common in our house growing up once a month. Did you all have liver diet where you had to eat liver once a month when you were growing up? It was the worst night ever. None of us liked liver, but we had to eat liver anyway, at least one time a month. And when we were going to ask, why do we have to eat this liver? Our parents would say, because it's good for you. Because it's good for you, because it has iron in it, it'll help you grow strong and muscles and bones, and it's just good for you. So, the liver. Liver night one was almost always followed by a favorite food, like spaghetti night. Spaghetti and meatballs, or fried chicken, and mashed potatoes, and gravy, and green beans, and garden. This would be kind of our reward, if you will, for eating the liver. God says, the Lord said to the prophet Isaiah, as we hear today's first reading, that just as the heavens come down for rain and snow, and they do not return until they have watered the earth and made it be fruitful and fertile, so too shall my word be that goes forth to my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall be to do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. My word shall not return to me void, says God, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I send it. Do you treat God's word, the sacred word of the scripture, as the smorgasbord? word? Do you treat it as, I like some of it, but some of it I don't like so much. Some of it's too hard to live, or I disagree with, or God's outdated, or it's not relevant to me in my time. Well, if my parents had an MSC liver, then we would treat everything like a smorgasbord, right? We would say that um, I just want to eat what I like, and that's what tastes good to me. That can be a great temptation, right? But my parents knew better because they knew it was good for us. Just like God knows that His word, His will, His way, no matter how difficult it may be for us sometimes, is good for us. In fact, it feeds our soul, it feeds our spirit. It makes us healthy in our spirit. The temptation can be to always want to have a favorite meal in Scripture, that which is kind of most palatable to us and tastes the best, easy to swallow, to discard that which is tough to eat or tough to swallow. It's faith in Scripture, even though we know that this is the Word of God and it is good for us. God's will and God's way is meant to bear fruit in our lives. We hear through. All of the scripture today. My word shall not return to me void, says the Lord. This word is Jesus. Jesus is the word made flesh and dwelt among us. It sets us free, in fact. Today, in the second reading, we hear from St. Paul as he speaks to the Romans that I consider that the sufferings of the present time are as nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed to us. And this great gift for creation is made subject to the futility that is pointlessness or uselessness will indeed set us free if we allow it to in our lives by our free will. We are set free from slavery and sin and corruption when we say yes to God's word, not as a slurred word, as some I like and some I don't. Some I pick and choose and some I set aside and all as all of God's will. St. Paul says, even now all creation is groaning in labor pains. Even now we groan in labor pains because it is difficult sometimes to live God's will and God's way. But this suffering says to St. Paul is nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed to us. And that glory he speaks of eternal life with our maker. So we might ask today, what must we do to be sure that we are not scores or Catholics, thinking and choosing here and there, avoiding that which is difficult in our teaching and only embracing those things that are easy and convenient or feel good to us? We might ask, how do we become a people who are preparing our seatbelt? So that the sweet song by God Himself in our lives through His Word, seeing that it's the Word made flesh, will root deeply into our very being, into our hearts, our minds, our souls. We might ask, does God's Word bear fruit in my life today? 
is meant to. We know that. We know that God's word is meant to be fruitful. But by our free will, sometimes it can be left void. Jesus comes to us with his word as the sower. And his word is the seed of the soils, our hearts, our minds, our souls, our very will. And we ask, what kind of heart, mind, soul, or will do we have? Is it well prepared to receive his word, to allow it to root deeply and grow abundantly and become fruitful, 100 or 60 or 30 fold in our lives? Jesus clearly in the gospel today lays out kind of this, these choices that we have. The first choice, he says, is that there could be a hard path that his word falls on. That is, the path seems so the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away that which was sown into our hearts, into our minds, into our souls, into our very being, our wills. That's so sad when I think about it, that there would be a hardness of heart for any one of us, that God's word would just kind of be void because the evil one comes and steals it away. Because we are maybe unprepared, we are uneducated, we are uncatechized. We haven't prepared well and faith to understand the word of God. And so when it comes and falls on the path of our hearts, which is hard, then it is stolen away immediately by father of lies. None of us wants to be a hardened heart. The second choice that God gives us is that by our free will, he says the seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy that has no way and lasts only for a time. And when tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. Which one of us in this day have not sent some kind of tribulation in our lives, in our life, in our parish, in our church, our community, our nation, our world, perhaps even our family life? Which one of us has not seen that the church itself is being persecuted today? Right? Just in this nation, last night there were two churches were out of kind of adversarial uh, reflection on what's going on in our country. When this tribulation or persecution comes, we'll be so rooted in faith and understand that so fully in our own lives that nothing will shake us. Or will it be that it falls on the rocky ground of our hearts, our minds, our souls, and the word of God, and thus becomes void? A third option that is before us is that the seed can be sown among thorns. It is the one who hears the word. But then worldly anxiety, the lure of riches, chokes the root, and it bears no fruit. Worldly anxiety has become a heightened um, condition in our day. And so it would be easy to fall into that anxiety and start listening to the words of people or organizations that aren't necessarily the Word of God. It's an easy temptation to fall into, and all of a sudden, my name is being the Word, God's Word. Jesus is being choked out of our very lives. It's like the, the, the fact that there, there's things that have popped up around us that are not true, they're not God, right, and all of a sudden they choke out that which is God. We must be vigilant as Catholics and to be able to recognize what is God's word, what is God's will, what is God's way, and what is the way of the world. The fourth option. The option that we all hope for and that we embrace and we seek in our own lives is that the seed is sown in rich soil, and the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields 160 or 34. There it is. There is what we desire as Christians, as Catholics, that our hearts, our minds, our souls, our wills would be so warm, so rooted in God, that we would bear fruit here in our world in which we live. And that fruitfulness is not just for our souls and for our eternal salvation, but it is for fruitfulness for the world around us, for people close to us, our families, our workplaces, for our parish, our church, our community life, indeed for this nation and for the whole world. And so, 
today we ask ourselves, what is the heart, our mind, our soul, our will look like? Is it well prepared? Is it that we till the soil and we remove the rocky ground, remove the rocks, those things that stand in the way of fruitfulness in our lives, that which is perhaps sinful or keeping us from growing our faith? Have we cultivated and fertilized and watered the very heart of our hearts? Have we prepared well which soil we would give it by God's grace so that it can bear fruit? How do we do that? Well, we know that the Word comes to us from God in several ways. One is through prayer. I say it over and over and over again, but if we are praying, then we are spiritually suffering. Prayer is our spiritual life. It's our communication with God. It's listening and speaking, but mostly listening to God. And what's one of the best ways to listen to God is through His Word. It's made flesh. It's through sacred scriptures, it's through the words of Jesus Christ. So we must be in prayer as people of faith. And in that prayer, we often should be cracking open the Holy Bible, the Sacred Scripture. And we should be doing some what's your debate to really dive deeper and study. One of the great Bibles that's out today is the Ignatian Study Guide, the Ignatian Spirit, Spiritual Study Guide Bible. You can find it online that helps us to kind of break open the Word because of all the footnotes that are given to us. But what does this mean? What does that mean? Where is the context of the scripture? What was happening in this time and place? What was Jesus trying to teach? Another way that we can receive God's word in prayer is sitting before him in adoration. In these days when I've experienced kind of turmoil and struggle and suffering myself, and I've experienced so many people who share with me their own um, kind of uneasiness of heart and mind and um, the things that boil the world around us. I often ask them, and I've asked myself, are you sitting with the Lord in adoration? Do you sit before Him and ask, show me your will, show me your will, breaking open sacred scripture His word so that we can find the right path instead of a path given to us by all the stuff of the world? Are we bringing the catechism with us to prayer so that we can better understand the teachings of the church? One of the great Bibles that I like to use and I recommend to people is called the New Catholic Answers Bible. I like it because it's Catholic and because it has answers. It has answers to our questions. It has answers because it's God's Word. But it also has these nice little inserts that ask questions. Like, why do Catholics pray for the dead? Why are we worshiping the embryonic stem cell research at all? Why do Catholic Bibles have 73 books? It asks questions of both the morality, it asks questions of tradition and faith, it asks tradition, it asks questions of the very rootedness of our lives, the Word of God. And then it gives a brief answer to the question, and then it gives us more resources to go to. Other sacred scripture which helps us to understand, it refers us to the catechism of the church and where the catechism teaches about this topic, sometimes things that are very difficult for us as Catholics to live out fully and faithfully. I recommend that if you don't already have one, you might get a new Catholic Answers Bible in your hand or the Ignatian Study Guide in your hand so that there is a total and an extra bonus to reading and praying the scripture. And finally, we prepare well the soil, the richness of the soil which God has blessed us with with His grace by going to the Holy Mass. Today you will come, and part of the Mass, a very essential part, the first part, which we're right now is called the Liturgy of the Word. And we have listened and we have sought to hear, we have not wanted the, the Word to be seated deeply within us and rooted deeply within us. And then we receive His body, blood, soul, the divinity, the liturgy of the Eucharist, so we can be fortified to be able to go forth and live the Word of God in the world in which we live. There are many other ways that we can hear and receive the Word. But these are the three most fundamental, the most important in my heart and mind as I pray in these days. Lord, show us the path forward. You know, my heart and mind and soul. When I've asked that question him time and time again, he has said, tell your people, tell my people to do three things. Come to me in prayer every day and ask my word and my way. 
invite them to adoration so they can sit before me and worship, honor me, and glorify me, but also see the excerpts before me. And make sure they come to Mass. Make sure they return to the Holy Mass if they're able, because it's there that they are fortified with the Word and with the Sacrament to be able to go forth and live most fully the Catholic life. This is a voice smorgasbord, right? And sometimes it's not easy because we don't like living in some cases. I mean, sometimes we don't always like it's hard to live in the word that is given to us. But we know that God gives us that word so that we can live most righteous, righteously and live the help of our mind, body, and spirit that he has made for us to live. I have a challenge for you in this week ahead, an invitation, a challenge, you can call whatever you will. But I'm going to invite you to break open sacred scripture and find something in there that you really like. Like, you're like, I embrace this. This is, I love to live this out. You know, I, I love to uh, say, careful. So you can go to Matthew 25 and read that and it says, you know, whatsoever you've done to me, so my brother that you've done to me. And, Give a drink to the thirsty and food to the hungry. I really love that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing me to live out that word in my life. But then I challenge you to also go to something that's a hard teaching of the church, something that's more difficult to embrace. Maybe for one, it might be Matthew 25, where it's just hard to care for the poor in my life. For another, it could be that in chapter 6 of John is difficult truth of the Holy Eucharist, and I sometimes struggle really embracing that Jesus is really present in that piece of bread, in that wine. We become the body, blood, soul, and of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is, if there's a hard teaching of the church for you, go and find that in Scripture, and then pray with them. Put it before the Lord in prayer, in adoration, bring it to Mass again next Sunday, and allow the Lord to feed you with His Word. Allow his word to bring deeply into your heart, your mind, your soul, and your very being. To do so is to desire to be fruitful. It's a desire to bear fruit for others around us by God's grace. The Lord promises us that if his seed, his word, falls on rich soil, we will hear that word. We will understand that word. And that word will bear fruit. 100 or 30 or 64. For those who have ears, they ought to hear.